I hope this video helps. Please check out the playlist, Evidence for Christianity, Evidence for the Bible, End Times, and the Book of Revelation. I'll leave links in the description for all four. Enjoy. A friend of mine wanted me to look at his 70-inch Vizio TV. Model number M70-C3. All right, it's time to get all the screws off the back. I'll give you an assessment uh, when I get them all out where they go. I want your help. A quick inventory of the screws that we got. We got a whole bunch of the same size and thread screw that go around the perimeter here with washers on them. And then we got some short angle headed screws that go right here where the inputs are at. And then a couple of uh, wide thread screws with no washer um, that go right here in this area of, on the back of the case. And then we got one angle head wide thread screw that goes right there where the uh, power cable goes in. Now I should be able to take this back off. So down there where the feet used to be, I just had to get a hold of it and pull hard enough to where it finally popped everything loose. Now, we can get it off. Just pull up along the edge. There we go. That's what it looks like on the inside. So at this point you do need to be super careful of this board right here. There is some high voltage and some capacitors that can store high voltage. Be mindful of that. Let it sit for a while after you unplug it and shut it off. That way you don't shock yourself. And then you open it up and look at the power supply and then you see that these capacitors right here are bulging out the top. The 16 volt 1000 microfarad capacitors. I'm going to show you how to change these seven. And then also this transistor because it comes in the kit. So before you do any repairs to this power supply board, you gotta be careful of these high voltage capacitors because they can store a charge. And <clears throat> just to show you here what you're working with, um, I've had it off for maybe two minutes and I'm gonna measure across those capacitors and see how much voltage is actually on it. <laughs> it's at 256 volts. Now I've been shocked by 300 volts DC before and that hurt pretty bad. Definitely don't want to be getting struck by one of those capacitors. Let this power supply sit for 10-20 minutes before going and ripping it off of here and doing any repairs. Uh, measure across the capacitors, make sure they're discharged. They're going to slowly discharge over time. But make sure they're discharged before you go pulling it off and doing any repairs. So I bought this little repair kit off of eBay. For this power supply, it came with all the capacitors and uh, a transistor that uh, you're supposed to replace, and we'll see if that fixes the problem. What the transistor number is, that's two, that's U201, and then here's all the capacitors listed out that you got to replace. It's the 1000 microfarad 16 volt capacitors on the board. So I'll leave a link to this in the description. I am an eBay affiliate, so I do earn a commission from any qualifying purchases when using my link. I'll leave an Amazon list link in the description with all the tools that I use to make this repair. I am an Amazon associate, so I do earn from any qualifying purchases when using my link, and that helps support my channel. I bought this solder wick for this job uh, in order to solder wick the solder out of the holes instead of using the solder sucker, which can get kind of messy. I'm replacing all these 16 volt 1000 microfarad capacitors here, so there's seven total. And then this transistor right here, this U201. So I've had this power supply sitting here for 20 minutes now. Let's see if the high voltage capacitors are discharged yet. We're at 13.5 volts. So we're good to go ahead and take this power supply off. It's not going to hurt us. Just got some screws and wire harness plugs to take off. And these plugs, just get your thumb on here and squeeze in order to unhook it. And then wiggle back and forth to get it to come off. And then down here. All right, now take out all the screws. So something to keep in mind when measuring across a high voltage capacitor, this capacitor is rated for 450 volts. 
So it will never go above 450 volts. So you want to make sure that your meter is rated for the same voltage or more. So this one is rated here for 1K volts max, which is 1000 volts DC there. That solid line with a dotted line underneath the underneath it above the V, that means it's for DC. And th down here is 750 volts AC max. That squiggly line above the V means that it's AC. So right now I'm letting my soldering iron preheat. I got it set to three for this specific one. And then I'm gonna start clipping on the leads all the components that I'm gonna remove and then take those off. Um, so that I, it's just easier that way and then I'll use the soldering iron to pull the leads out of the holes. And uh, let's get started. And definitely don't forget your safety glasses. I'm not going to clip the leads to the transistor because it could damage the board uh, with me trying to get underneath that and clipping it. Capacitors are glued down. I'm going to have to gently pry them up off the glue without breaking anything. i got a tiny flathead screwdriver here that I'm going to use to help cut that, uh, cut that glue away and pry it. Alright, so now I'm going to just remove the leads from the uh, holes. So now i got my soldering iron turned up to 4. I'm going to be putting the soldering iron on the pad on the back and pulling the lead out from the front. So the U201 right there, I tried to glob solder on the back and then pull it out. It wasn't working very well. So now I'm going to try my solder wick, solder, desolder it. So the solder wicking worked, the part's loose, so you can see it's moving easily. So it's not connected anymore. So make sure it's not too hot when you grab it, and you should be able to pull it out just like that. So now I'm going to clean up all the pads. Uh, sometimes it requires taking a little bit of solder and putting it back on the pad and then solder wicking it off to get everything. So let's go ahead and clean them all up. Got some cotton swabs and rubbing alcohol here. I'm going to rub off all the old resin flux from the solder and uh, anything else. And clean up the pads real good before we go putting the new parts in. Fortunately, the transistor has all the leads preformed for us, so we don't have to bend those up, but we are going to have to form the leads on the capacitors to get them to go down the holes, and so the capacitors will uh, set up correctly, so let's do that. Please support my channel by leaving a super thanks, or you can join Ramit Hood through a link that I'll leave in the description, and we'll both get a free stock, or you can purchase the part that I leave in the description, and I'll get a little commission. Continue watching. So the capacitors are polarity sensitive, so you can only put them in one way. If you put them in backwards, they could blow up. Now you see a plus and a minus near the holes for the capacitor. The negative side is the short lead or the side with the line on it. So this has an arrow line type thing. This is the negative. So the longer lead is the positive and it's got no marking. So we're going to want to bend those 90 degrees. And it's so I got this line on the negative side. It looks like all of them have the negative side on this side of the board. The polarity determines kind of where how the uh, capacitor lays in there and what direction to bend your leads. So I'm basically just going to take a needle nose pliers and bend it 90 degrees, kind of a little bit away from the capacitor there. You don't want to bend it right at the capacitor because uh, you could do some damage inside it. So now we got these uh, bent, and then we can just set the capacitor into the holes and there it is then we can solder it on the other side so I'm going to go ahead and bend and put all the rest in there
All right, all my capacitors have their leads bent the correct way and they're ready to go in the holes. All right, so the way I'm going to do this is go ahead and put the capacitor into the holes. So do it one at a time. Put the capacitor into the holes, set it in all the way, hold it, and then kind of spread the leads so it'll kind of hold it in there for you when you flip it over to solder. So we're going to put the transistor in the board now. You can just grab it and you can grab on the leads and pull it, pull it out of the tape here. And then when you're putting it into the board, it has the shape of the transistor to show you kind of how it goes in. And so just follow the way that the shape is of the transistor to put it in the correct way. It'll match uh, the way it looks on the board. All right, and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the transistor. Just kind of hold it there, and then spread out the outside legs to keep it in place when we solder. So now it's everything's in place, ready to solder. I'm gonna take some paper, watered up paper, put it underneath the capacitors to keep them up against the board, so that they don't, you know, they're not sticking out. So those are going to be flat up against the board now and uh, everything's in there so now let's solder it in. I'm going to go clip off all the leads now and then we can clean up the solder pads with uh, rubbing alcohol. Even though that solder pad came off, I'm pretty sure there was enough of it there to make a good connection. So there's what it looks like now that I'm done. Got all my crooked capacitors on there. I plugged it in and then uh, the light came on down here and then faded away. So let's go ahead and hit the power button. Oh man, you hit the power button. I did. You hit the power button. Oh look, we got light. See the light around the edges? It means the screen's on. So we know this power supply is good. As there you can see we have a backlight lit up. The TV's on. Uh, yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Somebody must have broke the screen while moving it. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. And if you want to connect with me, I have a public group on MeWe called Share Your Trade. And I got an Instagram. I'll leave links in the description for both of those. Thanks for watching.